I just wanted to say a huge word of thank you to everyone who continues to pray for me and check on me. I'm doing a lot better. It's been over three weeks now since my heart attack, and by God's grace, I'm doing much better and recovering well, and I look forward to being back in the saddle next uh, next Sunday, and so it's going to be a great day, but I have come today to bring a message to you, the second message in our Butterfly Effect series. Now, this is a series we started last week, and the idea is simply this, that seemingly small things in our life can have far-ranging, cascading consequences in the future. See, we see this all over our culture, but we also see it in our spiritual life. So last week we talked about the idea of sowing and reaping, that ultimately you will reap what you sow, you will reap more than you sow, and you will reap later than you sow. But today, I want to talk about another aspect of our lives as Christians that can have far-ranging consequences in the future. And the concept today is not one that you're probably going to be familiar with a lot of the times because it's a lost art in our culture, but it's the idea of listening. Listening. It's the idea of listening. See, listening has become a lost art in our culture. A lot of the times, because everybody now has become their own personality. Everybody's got something to say. Everybody's got something to write. Everybody's got something that they want to put out there. And yet, the truth of the matter is, even with an increase in content, or an increase in people talking or speaking or having an opinion, we need listening more than ever before. I believe that a great listener can actually have significant consequences on our life in the future. Over the past few weeks, to be honest with you, I've been able to uh, lay on my back and to listen more than normal. You know, kind of part of my job is to speak, is to say things, is to invest into people, is to counsel people, is to give people advice. But one of the things that I've been doing is listening. Been listening to family members, been listening to doctors, been listening to podcasts, been listening to a lot of different things to try to learn, to gain understanding, to grow, to get better. And I think this is very, very vital to our lives as believers. And so I want to talk about it today, and I want to ask you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, because today I want to talk about how we're supposed to be listening to God and also listening to to one another. What I want to start in 1 Kings chapter 19, an amazing story. We're going to begin to read there in verse 11. If you have your Bibles, here's what it says. It says, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Now, I want to talk about, first of all, listening to, to God, how we as believers in Jesus should be listening to God. And how can we do this? In order to do this, I think we need to do two things. First of all, we should get away from the noise to hear his voice. The text says that Elijah went up on Mount Horeb. Scholars believe that this mountain was about 6,000 feet in elevation. Certainly, he did this in the passage right here. We can see it 
right in front of his face. But did you know it's very common to see in Scripture that people would get away from the noise to be able to listen to the Lord? Habakkuk, he stands guard on a post and he keeps watch to see what God would say to him. We see that Paul went to Arabia to spend time away listening to the Lord. Even Jesus himself went away from everything else to pray and to listen to the Father. In Matthew chapter 14, it says that he went on a mountainside to pray himself. In Mark 1, it tells us that Jesus got up before any light to pray. In Luke chapter 4, it says that Jesus went to a solitary place to get alone with the Father. There is a pattern in Scripture whereby people get away from the noise in order to get closer to God, to hear Him, to listen to Him. There is so much noise in our life today, isn't there? It seems like it is overwhelming at times. Now, some of that noise is unavoidable, like the noise just from our family or in our jobs or something like that. I mean, when our house is empty, like it is right now when I'm recording this video, when my kids aren't in the house, it seems eerily quiet. Now, when they come back to the house, they only have one volume, and that volume is extremely loud. I don't know why, I don't know how, but that's just the way that it is. Now, that is unavoidable noise in our life. But there is some noise in our life that's avoidable. You know, I was in a meeting one time with someone who did not know how to silence his cell phone. He did not know how to silence the notifications. And so we were in this meeting. It was a small group of people. And all of a sudden, his phone started to ding, started to ding over and over again. And he started messing with his phone, and he couldn't figure out how to silence it. He didn't realize that there was a switch on the side of his phone to be able to silence all the notifications. And so I did what anybody else would do in that situation is I, as well as the other people around me, started sending him text message, text message after text message. So his phone would continue to ding, 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 ding over and over again. And his face turned bright red and he was so embarrassed because all these things were happening. He was turning around saying, stop, stop that. What are you doing? You know, we have so many notifications in our life. So much noise in our life. Everybody wants to talk to us. All of these apps want to prompt us with things. We have calendar notifications. We have text messages. We have likes on Instagram and Facebook that we're getting notifications about. We're getting notifications about the latest sales at our favorite stores. We're getting notifications about the weather or about news or about sports. We're getting all of these notifications in our life and it seems like a constant stream of sound, of noise in our life. And through all of that noise, we miss things. We don't see things. We're distracted by things. Listen to me. We have got to, in our life, get away from some of the avoidable noise on a regular basis so that we can hear from the Lord. We've got to do this. You got to go into the settings of your phone and turn off some of the notifications or, and this would be the craziest thing, turn off your phone for a little while. It actually has a power off button if you didn't know that. It actually has a button that is designed to totally silence it. And I believe there are times in our life when we've got to get away from the noise Turn off the radio. Turn off your playlist. Turn off your phone. Turn off some of the avoidable noise in your life 
in order to hear from the Lord. I believe this is absolutely vital in our life. We must do this to hear the voice of God. We see in the passage that Elijah went up on the mountain away from everything else to hear from the Lord. This should be a regular practice in our life. But the second thing we must do if we want to listen to God is we must learn to discern His voice from all others. Learn to discern His voice from all others. I'm sure that when, when Elijah went on, up on the mountain, he, he looked at the natural phenomena that were happening around him, and he thought, this is the Lord. Here he is. Can you imagine the windstorm? It must have been amazing. Surely this is the Lord, but it was not. Well, in the earthquake, surely this is the Lord. This is him. He's about to speak. Maybe he wants to shake things up in my life. No. Maybe it's in the fire. What about the fire? This has to be it. You know, there's images in Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, where he used the image of fire to show his mighty power. He says, man, I, I, I'm going to see this with my own eyes. This is the Lord. No, no. And then came the whisper. This can't be God. Can't I mean, in a whisper? This is where God is? Listen to me. We must be able to pray for discernment, to listen to and understand the Lord's voice from any other voice that's out there. Because the truth is, there are many voices that want to speak to us. They have their own agendas. They have their own goals. But we don't want any of the other voices to take prominence or priority in our life. We want to listen to the voice of the Lord. You see, I grew up in a Christian high school, in a Christian home, very involved in the youth group of our church. And I can't tell you how many times that the Lord told people to break up with someone, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, right before Christmas. And the truth was, the Lord didn't tell them to do that. They just didn't want to have to buy them a Christmas present. Or the Lord told me to break up with you before the summer. Well, the Lord didn't really tell them to break up with them. They were just tired of them and wanted to pursue other relationships, right? I mean, this is the thing, right? We don't want to blame our decisions on the voice of the Lord if we're not actually hearing the Lord. Don't, don't blame Him for something that's not His fault. And don't follow a voice that is not the Lord's. Now, how can we discern what is the voice of the Lord and what is not? Well, a couple of things. First of all, I want you to know that His voice is not usually audible or mystic. Now, this is important, and let me be clear. There are some people in Scripture and some people today that have said that they hear or have heard an audible voice from God. Okay? And I am not discounting those experiences. Obviously, in Scripture, if you see it, this is real, this is true. But I want you to know this. This is not normal. It is not normal to hear an audible voice of God. These encounters are actually rare. And if you have heard the voice of God, it doesn't mean that you are a person of greater faith or who is more spiritual or who is uh, raised to this new level. It's simply an experience that some people have. Uh, most uh, Christian people don't have visions. It's possible, but again, it's not normal. So, we should not be waiting to hear the audible voice of God or waiting to see a vision from God before saying, okay, this is God's voice. This is what I need to do. Let's walk in this path. I wouldn't be waiting for that. 
but his voice, listen to me, always sounds like scripture. If you read your Bible, you are listening to God. He will never tell you anything in the Bible that is in opposition to his will. If you are following the Bible, you are following his path for your life because it is authoritative. And listen to me, it is enough. It is enough. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, and watch this, hearing from the voice of God from the Word of God. Now, every so often, someone will say to me something like, Josh, I I just don't feel like God is speaking into my life right now. He's just not speaking. It seems like he's silent. And my immediate question and follow-up is whether they have opened up their Bible recently. Because every time you open up your Bible, the Lord speaks to you. The Lord will speak into your life every time you open His Word. So if we're looking for, hey, I want to discern the voice of God, let's start with His Word and not just be looking for some type of mystic or uh, supernatural experience. He wants to speak to you. He wants to work in your life. Are you listening? Now, how can listening affect the future? Because the idea of the butterfly effect is that the things that you do today will affect the future. How can listening to God in your life affect your future? Listen to me. Because if you do not listen to God, you might miss a direction that you were supposed to take. Have you ever been driving in your car, even in a familiar area, And your mind is wondering and thinking about other things and all of a sudden you miss a turn or you're going down the street and you're going in the wrong direction. I I, I do this sometimes. I may be thinking so intently about something that I'm not thinking about where I'm supposed to go. We can do this in our life when we're distracted by the noise around us and are not listening to the Lord. We can miss His direction. Where he says, hey, I want you to go in this way, and you're not even paying attention because you're not listening to the Lord. You can also miss a blessing that God wanted to give you. Maybe there's something right in front of your face, but you're looking at your phone so much that you can't see a blessing that is right in front of you that God wants to give you because you won't listen. You won't put down the noise. You won't get away from everything going on around you. Not listening to God also holds you back from your relational intimacy with God. Why? Because in a relationship, in a friendship, the way that that grows is that you speak and listen to one another. That is a key component of any relationship. And so I would say to you, hey, you want to make sure that you are listening to the Lord because you're going to hear His direction in your life. You're going to be able to know, hey, when faced with a decision, this is the direction that I'm supposed to go. When you listen to the Lord, you are going to receive the blessings that He wants to bring into your life. Why? Because you are a person that listens to the Lord and you are in step with His Spirit. You're going to also have greater intimacy relationally with the Lord as you listen to Him. And the relationship is going to grow in an amazing way. We should be people that are listening to God. But I want to expand it just a little bit further. Because I believe not only should we be people that listen to God, but we should be people that listen to others. And so I I, I think about the greatest commandment, Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 and following, where it says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? commandment in the law. 
And Jesus responded, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I want you to know a couple of things about listening to one another, to others. The first is this. You listen to people you love. You listen to people you love. Do you remember when your mom or dad may have told you something and either you didn't listen to it or you just ignored it and they have the audacity to come back after you have fallen on your face and failed in a bad situation and say, I told you so. You didn't listen to me. You should have listened to me, but you did not listen to me. We should be people that are listening to the people that we love. I love in Proverbs where it says, especially to children, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. For they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. You see, this idea of listening to people is something that I'm trying to instill into the life of my two sons. And they don't seem to like to listen. I don't know where they get it from, but they just don't like to listen. And I think all of us have grown up and have seasons in our life like that. But when it comes to listening to the people that you love, what it requires is that it requires that we take time with people. It requires that we look them in the eyes. It requires that we silence the interruptions around us. It requires that we don't think while they're talking about how we're going to respond. It takes us to to get to the point where we consider criticism, even criticism in our life, to be a healthy thing. Accountability in our life is a helpful thing, an opportunity for us to grow and to mature in our relationship with Christ. And so we listen to the ones that we love. You know, the last thing that I want to tell you today is simply this. As we listen to others, your listening to someone else could be life-altering to them. Your listening could be life-altering to someone else. James chapter 1, verse 19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Now, we use that verse and we talk about, hey, we shouldn't be angry, we should listen to people instead, but we miss that first part of the verse that we are supposed to be quick to listen. Forget the anger part, right? Just take that phrase by phrase. We're to be quick to listen to one another. Listening to one another is incredibly valuable. And I can't tell you how um, incredible it is to sit down with someone and to hear their story to go below the surface, to help see below their mask and get to know someone for who they actually are. This is incredibly valuable and this is an incredibly exciting thing to be a part of. The question is, why don't we do it that much? Why don't we meet new people? Why don't we get to know them for who they are? Why don't we go below the surface and hear people's stories? It could literally, listen, change their life. Change their life. But it takes time. It takes genuine interest. It takes sacrifice. Sometimes it takes wading into difficult waters. You know, one time a few years ago, I got to tour a facility. This facility was used as a safe haven for women and their children that were being rescued from abusive relationships in the home. 
And the leaders of this facility told me amazing stories of women that had been rescued, of children, of families that had been saved. And it all came down to one single thing in every case. That it started with someone that were willing to listen. That were willing to listen. That were willing to say, I don't want to just see what you look like on the outside, that everything's fine, that everything's going okay, but inside of your house, behind closed doors, where nobody could see, you were living a life of incredible pain and heartache and suffering, and you needed a rescue. And so all of these cases of rescue started with someone simply listening to them and taking the time. You know, I've been able to be in situations with people where I have listened to their story and it's helped me in incredible ways know how to minister to them because maybe their background gave me an insight that I would not have normally seen in them on the exterior. It's also given me the opportunity to be able to share the gospel. When it's clear with people as I'm listening to them that they don't know Jesus, that they don't have a relationship with Him, that they didn't grow up in a home where they were taught the Bible, they didn't have Christian mentors around them, they didn't go to Sunday school, they don't know what the Bible says, they don't know about the incredible sacrifice that Jesus made for them on the cross to forgive their sin and save their life. And I've been able to share the gospel with them. I've been able to see some people come to know Jesus. And it started with simply listening. Don't don't get the idea that we have to be constantly producing some type of content with our life or saying something verbally out of our mouth to have worth or value or meaning or to make a difference. I'm telling you today that according to God's Word, we need to be people that are great listeners in our life and are willing to take the time, are willing to sacrifice, are willing to go below the surface. I'm telling you, as we listen to God and as we listen to one another, I am telling you, we will have a profound impact if we can just become listeners. So today, I'm going to ask you to consider right now whether you are a listener. Are you a person that listens to God, that listens to one another? Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for your word for how it challenges us. I thank you for our church and for the opportunity today to come together and to study your word. God, would you instill in every single one of us the ability to be listeners, listening to you and listening to one another. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.